Road Skin by Hailey Bieber has made a big name for itself in just two years. Skin prep with a full face of Road. If for some reason you can't tell, I'm literally obsessed with Road, so obviously we need to start off with a lip treatment. But can the success last for many years and even decades, or will it peak and decline like many other beauty brands have in the past? In this episode of The Devil Wears Data, we'll use research, data, analysis, and talk to sources to explore how the brand got so popular and why that might not be enough to stay relevant in the future. Two years ago, if I told you you looked like a glazed donut, you would have thought I was being rude or just weird. But in 2024, millions of people are aiming to get glazed donut skin and strawberry girl makeup because Hailey Bieber has made it cool. Glazed donut concept. My standard when I go to bed at night is that if I'm not getting into bed looking like a glazed donut, then I'm not doing the right thing. I like looking like a glazed donut. I don't want to go to bed at night unless I look like a freshly glazed oh, donut. Oh, okay. So, so that's what it is. Find yourself a moisturizer that helps you look like a glazed donut. But how popular is road skin and how much do people like it? Let's answer that question using data. Road has grown insanely fast in just two years. Now, because it's a private indie company, we don't have access to its financial data and the company didn't respond to my request for comment. But there is other data that can help us gauge how well it's doing. In the past year, the company's TikTok engagement is high thanks to this video that got 7 million views of Hailey Bieber testing out a new product. This has made it one of the top independent makeup brands on TikTok by follower growth this year so far compared to others. On Instagram, Road Skin was the most popular brand last month when compared to another 100 brands. But even when looking at the brand outside of TikTok and Instagram, mention of Road Skin in data across X, Reviews, blogs, Reddit, forums, news sources, Facebook, YouTube comments, and Tumblr shows that road skin mentions are high compared to other celebrity-backed beauty brands. It's only second to rare beauty, according to analysis by Brandwatch, that was exclusively obtained by The Devil Wears Data. Something that surprised me initially is that when you look at the sentiment of the brand online, at first glance it appears negative, especially when compared to Drew Barrymore's Flower Beauty, which has an overwhelming positive sentiment online. But when the Brandwatch team dug further, they told me that it showed that the negative sentiment is actually positive comments. For example, comments like Hailey Bieber gave out water, ice cream, and parasols to the people waiting in line for her road pop-up because of how hot it was, you'll never make me hate her, and comments like, I'm sorry, I know she gets a lot of hate for copying and creating the dumbest beauty trends, but Hailey Bieber's looks for Rhodes pop-up were 10 out of 10, like sickening. The words hate, dumbest, and sickening skew the data because they are negative. This is why data isn't always perfect and requires some further analysis before we can figure out what it's telling us. But overall, when you put all the different pieces together, including this chart, it points to the fact that Rhodes skin has blown up in popularity in just two years. By the way, if you like these sort of analysis videos about the business side of fashion and beauty, make sure to subscribe to The Devil Wears Data and like this video to get more recommended to you. You don't have to have knowledge in beauty, business, fashion, or finance to be here, but you'll learn about all four. I also have a newsletter where I send out updates and further details about my videos in case we ever lose touch on YouTube. So what makes road skin so special? Let's dig into it further and make sure to stick around to the end when we discuss what's next for the brand going forward and why current success may not mean continued success in the future. Do you want to see a road review from somebody who bought these products with her own money? It seems like every influencer and her sister got these in PR and we've been seeing so many positive reviews. Like I don't think I've even seen one bad thing said about these and that's really rare. I bought these with my own money so I can be perfectly honest with you and I'm trying them for the very first time on camera. Very pretty color, beautiful pink. I don't have anything bad to say. I think that everybody is telling the truth. At first, it might be easy to dismiss Rhodes' popularity as unsurprising because the woman behind it is Hailey Bieber, an it girl who has a following of over 50 million followers on Instagram. She's a model and also happens to be married to one of the biggest pop stars in the world. A lot of people would say that Rhodes is doing so well because of this factor, and they're not wrong. It certainly helps to have an inbuilt audience of millions of people to sell to. But here's the thing, a lot of women have millions of followers online and their brands don't always succeed to the same degree. Jennifer Lopez has over 250 million followers on Instagram and over 17 million followers on TikTok. And her brand was reportedly taken off the shelves at Sephora earlier this year. I also have a YouTube video about popular influencers like Addison Rae and how Sephora discontinued selling Addison's products in 2023 despite her being young, Gen Z, and one of the most followed people on TikTok. 
There's also been a rise in pushback against celebrity-backed beauty brands, so in the current market, Haley's It Girl status may have worked against her, but it didn't. So let's explore why. The line between the beauty industry and entertainment industry has increasingly blurred in the last two decades, especially with the rise of beauty influencers and content creators. I talk a bit about this in my video about e.l.f. Cosmetics on my channel. They do this really well, entertaining and selling beauty as a byproduct. But celebrity-backed beauty brands with their large followings have a unique opportunity to bring entertainment to their makeup brands. That's if they can pull it off. Celebrity beauty brands that are doing really well are the ones where the talent is really heavily involved in a super authentic way. Um, they're doing storytelling that's really clicking with their audience. Stacey Levine is a beauty brand consultant based in New York City who's worked with brands like L'Oreal and CoverGirl. She says Hailey Bieber's ability to start trends and incorporate them into online storytelling really sets the company apart. But along with storytelling, there's a layer of authenticity that often isn't seen in other beauty brands. She also has talked about a lot of the issues that her line addresses. So she's talked about being cyberbullied. She shows her skin when it's not perfect. Um, you know, she she starts all of these trends that go viral. A lot of them are food related. So thinking like glazed donut nails, glazed donut skin, um, strawberry girl makeup, vanilla. And then she incorporates those trends into the products that she is releasing and into, you know, the scents and the flavors of, you know, her lip treatments and all of those things. So she's really heavily involved. She's part of the brand. She's the face of the launches. She is doing interviews in the press. She's in their content. So she's really involved in the day to day. And that gives a layer of authenticity that doesn't happen with a lot of celebrity beauty brands. Hailey Bieber was already making entertaining content on her YouTube channel prior to the launch of Road, and when she did start the company, it came with a documentary and a look behind the scenes of how it was being developed. The making of Road documentary got 1.1 million views, entertainment, and great marketing. By the way, I tag all the sources that I speak to on the Devil Wears Data LinkedIn page, which I will link in the video description, so if you want to know the people that I've been talking to or you just want to follow me over there, that'll just be down in the description below. Okay, let's move on to point number two. Hailey Bieber is really good at taking her brand offline and out into the physical world, often on the streets of New York City and other major cities. This summer, there were lineups around the block in Soho, New York City to get into her pop-up shop. Close to a thousand fans had lined up hours before the shop even opened, and many had driven hours just to get into the tiny little store. Part of the success of her pop-ups reflect a larger trend, one in which people were going out and doing more stuff after spending years in isolation and lockdown during the pandemic. Another part is that the pop-up shops tend to do well because they're open only for a limited time, creating a sense of urgency to visit them. Temporary retail spaces, or pop-up shops, generate up to $80 billion in annual revenue, and projections indicate that market value will exceed $95 billion by the year 2025. And Hailey Bieber definitely isn't the only one doing pop-up shops. But something that has contributed to the success of the pop-up shops is that she leveraged the story she had told online to give people an experience of it in person. Pop-ups gave Rode a low-cost way of giving you a way to try her products without buying them. This is something that she can't do yet because Rode isn't available in stores like Sephora or Ulta. This is me at 8 a.m. in Toronto walking to the Rode booth pop-up. Except little did I know that by the time I got there, the line was two hours long already. And Haley's in real life experiences easily became large media events and memes, which even prompted Halloween costumes online. This created cultural moments that goes beyond pop-ups. This trend is beauty as lifestyle and culture. When I spoke to people who work in marketing, they said Haley is really good at shaping your lifestyle and general pop culture. Road skin isn't a product that just silently sits in your beauty cabinet. Bieber is at Irwan with a smoothie. She's at your fingertips with a phone case that kept selling out. The phone case is in your selfies that you post online, and she's even at your local Krispy Kreme. The fashion and beauty companies that do these sort of collaborations outside of just fashion and beauty sectors, like Elf often does, these companies are reminding you that the clothes you wear and the makeup you buy aren't just part of your getting ready routine, but they're a lifestyle that you can carry everywhere. But of course, marketing isn't everything, and what sets Road apart is that along with strong marketing efforts, they also have an experienced team. 
In modern day, it's easy to throw together a beauty product and sell it on social media, but it's another thing to do that with experts. The actual beauty products I do think are great and they have good formulas and they actually have a really strong team behind them. So I know that one of their advisors is Ron Robinson, who, who founded Beauty Stat and is a really prominent cosmetic chemist. So there are people behind this brand that are working on the formulas. And as far as that matters, I would say, I would say it really does. I think the marketing is going to matter. Absolutely. But if you don't have a, a strong product that can back it up, it's going to fall flat really quickly. Haley's face isn't the only thing driving the success of this product. Along with Ron Robinson, Bieber has staffed a New York City-based dermatologist, and the CEO is someone who has nearly 35 years of experience in sales and formerly the CEO at The Honest Company. The team together has perfected the hybrid between skincare and beauty, which was a rising trend as of the late 2010s. So all of these things have worked in Bieber's favor, but can Rhodes' success last? And what isn't working in her favor? A lot of beauty companies see their time in the limelight and then fade away, especially in today's market where anyone can start a beauty company. While no one can predict with 100% accuracy if the brand will be successful, there are some factors that can give us insight on the future of a company. I decided to talk to Rohit Banota to get some clarity. He's the founder of Jump Accelerator, which works with women-led and indie beauty brands to develop their businesses and help them become profitable. He's also tagged on the Devil Wears Data LinkedIn page where you can follow me for updates. So there are four types of innovation. The first is uh, storytelling or commercial innovation. Second is incremental. Third is transformational, sustaining. And fourth is disruptive. To help explain which beauty brands succeed and which don't, Rohit Binoda explained that there are four types of innovation, two of which Road Skin has perfected and two of which he doesn't yet see. Storytelling innovation, which he says wins the business quarter, which is a period of about three months, is something we know that Road does well. Incremental innovation, which includes a series of small improvements and upgrades made to a company's existing products or services or processes and methods can help win the year. This is something Rode does well by introducing a new viral product. It's pink. It's pink. I was just tapping through my stories and this stopped me dead in my tracks. This is the whole aesthetic I want for myself for the summer. The pink phone case is just too cute. The two that Benota says Rode falls short on is transformational innovation, which involves creating a new market or changing an entire industry, which wins the next several years and disruptive innovation, which is a long process that can win the next five years and beyond. Disruptive innovation is commonly taught in business schools, coined by a Harvard Business School professor, the late Clayton Christensen. Explain it. A disruptive innovation is not a breakthrough innovation that makes uh, good products a lot better. But it, we, it has a very specific definition, and that is it transforms a product that historically was so expensive and uh, complicated that only a few people with a lot of money and a lot of skill had access to it. A disruptive innovation makes it so, more, so much more affordable and accessible that a much larger population have access to it. Examples of disruptive innovation are pretty major. Benoda defines disruptive innovation a bit differently in the beauty sector. You're solving a problem that no one else has solved before. And again, I'm not giving this definition, uh, you know, as per Clayton Christensen. I'm giving it what generally is thought to be disruptive. Even disruptive is on a spectrum. So some brands can be less disruptive, meaning they might leverage a technology that is already taking off big time you know, a drastic change in culture or consumer behavior, right? Others might intend to change the consumer behavior or might intend to make people aware that there's a problem you're not solving, which is very disruptive, but also very risky. It's hard to find disruptive innovation in beauty companies that match the textbook definition of disruption. Since Road Skin hasn't quite nailed down the latter two types of innovations, it's hard to say how long the success will last, according to Benoda. But one question that's been on a lot of beauty industry people's minds this year is, is Road Skin going to enter a retail store to expand its company? I'm still so shocked that Road is not in Sephora yet or Ulta, and I think Road will be in Sephora this year. I need to be able to buy these lip treatments in person. I think Summer Fridays does so well because they're online and in Sephora, and so I think when Road gets into Sephora, they'll have huge competition. So which will they choose, Ulta or Sephora? They seem like the top two choices among beauty industry experts, but there still isn't yet consensus on which store the company will enter. This is because Ulta and Sephora 
ultimately serve different audiences and purposes, even though to a majority of us, they're just like two different makeup stores. While nobody other than the executives at Rode Skin have insights on their next move, there are a few factors that give us a hint of where Rode might end up. Right now, Rode is a direct-to-consumer brand, which means it sells its products directly off its website without a middle person like a store in the way. This is great for companies that want to own the data of what they're selling, like who's coming to their website, what they're buying, how long they're staying, how long they've been browsing, and so much more. But there's benefits to entering a store like Sephora or Ulta. It gives the brand a much bigger platform. It also sets the company up to get bought up by a larger company in the future. Entering Ulta serves U.S. customers who know Hailey Bieber well. Entering Sephora, which serves people around the world, you probably know it even if you don't live in the States, is tough because it's a crowded market. Another challenge that Rode might have is if it can keep Sephora happy. Right now, Bieber's products work on hyper cycles. The product gets introduced and then sells out. Then there's a wait list and the product gets introduced and then sells out. In order to succeed in a retail store like Sephora, a company needs to show it can consistently sell products and meet company demands over a long period of time. Rode will be expected to invest in paid programming, in-store education through its sales associates and advertisements if they enter a company like Sephora or Ulta. The beauty boardroom at Rode is likely looking at their numbers and figuring out which retail store would be best. If they find the product is popular among U.S. consumers, Ulta may be the spot. But if Rode wants global domination to match Haley's global audience, Sephora is where it'll end up. Of course, there is a third option, a department store or Target, but data shows that Sephora and Ulta both have had consistently strong growth and people rely more on these two stores for beauty products than department stores, especially if they're a younger audience that isn't going for very high-priced products. Tell me, have you tried Rode? What were your thoughts and where do you see the company in the long term? I'd love to get a discussion going in the comments, so let me know what you think and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again real soon.